Hey guys, what's up? So with the current situation going on, um, I thought I'd be doing these uh, daily anime based quizzes and today we'll be looking at uh, Pokemon. I'm kind of rerunning the cycle now, um, going through some of the more popular anime that I'm more familiar with um, rather than going into um, anime that I'm you know, new to. Um, I thought this was would have been a lot easier just um, from a research uh, point of view and also uh, using my own memory um, um, I can find this information a lot easier than say if I was to look at a series that I've not looked at before something like Hunter Hunter or even other anime such as One Piece Question 1 is which Pokemon is listed under the number 367 Unlike the other quizzes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide you with uh, several options. Um, this way it'll be a little bit easier. Um, please try and guess rather than actually use the internet because, I mean, you've got a one in three chance of getting it right anyway. And hopefully this will be a little bit more interactive um, if you do it that way. And so your options are either A, Thebas, B, why not? Or C, Untail. Um, so I'm going to give you about 10 seconds starting from now uh, to make your choices. Okay, so time is up. And the answer is Huntail. So I've got some facts about Huntail as well. Um, it is a light blue aquatic Pokemon uh, which has a serpentine-like body. Um, it has an orange semicircular fins which run the length of its spine and there are two additional fins on the underside of its lower jaw. Um, it's a large fan-like fin projects from the top of its head. Uh, white spots that are surrounded by orange rings dot its body, which resemble its eyes. Um, it attracts its prey by wagging its fish-shaped tail, which features glowing eye spots, a single dorsal fin, and a single pectoral fin. Huntail's large mouth features sharp teeth and allows it to gulp its prey whole. Huntail swims by wiggling its body, though it is not the strongest swimmer. Its sturdy spine and large eye allow it to survive in the high pressures and darkness of the deep sea. According to tradition, Huntail washing ashore is a sign that something unfortunate will happen. Despite being a pure water type Pokemon, um, it bears a dark type Pokemon assist in Pokemon Ranger Shadows of Almia. Huntail appears to have been based on the Gulper Eel, Viper Fish, one jaw or moray eel. It also resembles the rarely seen oarfish, mainly because of its orange coloured crest and fins. Until maybe a combination of hunt or hantin, speck or fleck, and tail. Multiple huntail appeared in the Evolutionary War under the ownership of the residents of the ABC Islands. In that particular episode, um, which was in the Hoenn region, a person has to be on Island C to evolve their clan pearl into a Huntail. One such Huntail uh, belongs to Keith, uh, who was the character. Um, this was later to, uh, found to be because of um, they found um, aspects of the deep sea tooth, uh, which is the necessary um, ingredient to evolve um, the clan pearl into the Huntail. Uh, Huntail debuted in a cameo in the Relicanth Reading Can. Um, Huntail appeared in the opening sequence of Lucario and the Mystery of Mew. Multiple Huntail appeared in Pokemon Ranger and the Temple of the Sea. Um, this was the episode, uh, this was a movie, and they were among the Pokemon present during the final showdown with Phantom and his crew. Huntail appeared in Up Close and Personable. It was among the many Pokemon that were found at the lake by the Pokemon Summer Academy. Multiple Huntail appeared in Going for the Gold, where they were among the Pokemon seen in the Amber Aquarium. A Huntail appeared in Do 
Hina ascending where it was swimming in the ocean. Two wild huntail appeared in the cavern where they were seen in the waters that surrounded the Moss Deep Space Center. Two huntail appeared in aquariums belonging to Mr. Briny and Team Aqua in Stickless in Your Craw Crawdont. Uh, a huntail made a cameo appearance as a Pokemon that uh, Sapphire swam on while she trained herself to be part of the wild in Rayquaza Redemption 2. And a huntail belonging to an Ether Foundation employee first appeared in uh, PASM 36. So question 2 is, what Pokemon is numbered 216? And the options you have are A. Teddy Ursa, B. Steelix, or C. Swinub. Again, I'll be giving you 10 seconds. Okay, and the answer is... And the answer is Teddy Ursa. So... It is a normal type Pokemon that was introduced in Generation 2 and it evolves into Earthring uh, starting at level 30. Um, it is a bipedal uh, Ursine Pokemon covered in short orange brown fur. Its muzzle is light tan uh, with a small black nose and black eyes. There is a slightly paler tan crescent marking on its face um, looking like a crescent moon and it has round ears. It has three claws on its forepaws as well as two claws and yellow paw pads on its hind paws. Its tail is short, round and puffy. Uh, Teddy so uses bee drill pollen and fruit to create its own honey. The marking on its face glows when it finds honey already made. Honey is often absorbed into Teddy Ursa's forepaws and it is often seen licking them. It will hide food stores throughout its territory before food becomes scarce in winter. Teddy Ursa typically live in mountainous regions. Um, Teddy Ursa is one of the 14 Pokemon for which foreign Pokedex entries can be collected in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Teddy Ursa is the only non-generation 1 Pokemon with a unique sprite in Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, aside from the different forms of Deoxys. Teddy Ursa can be seen as a parallel to Fanfi. Their evolution lines are exclusive to opposite versions of Pokemon Gold and Silver and Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and are the only Pokemon to swap version exclusive status between localizations. They each have one evolved form, and they both have pick up as an ability and lose it upon evolution. Teddy Ursa is based on a teddy bear and possibly a sun bear or sloth bear cub. Both honey bears, the moon marking, and the fact that it's a bear cub may mean it might have been based on the constellation Ursa Minor's uh, mythology. Uh, Teddy Ursa is a combination of Teddy Bear and Ursa, Latin for bear. Uh, Teddy Ursa debuted in Spell of the Unknown Ente, where Molly Hale used an illusion of one created by the Unknown as her second Pokemon in her battle against Brock. It quickly defeated Vulpix with a combination of Dynamic Punch and Fury Swipes. She was later seen playing with a real Teddy Ursa in the ending credits. Teddy Ursa made its main series debut in Unbearable. It was a manipulative thief who would pretend to be cute to humans in order to steal their food and blame it on their Pokemon. Ultimately, it evolved into Ursa Ring at the end of the episode and was no longer able to use its charm on humans uh, with these anymore. Although saying that, um, it did trick Team Rocket uh, into becoming its friend and was able to steal from them. Uh, Teddy Ursa is one of the best friends of the Pichu brothers. It appeared in Trouble in Big Town of Meowth and Pokemon, uh, Big Meowth, Little Dreams and Pichu Bros in Party Panic. It also made a cameo appearance in Giratina and the Sky Warrior. A Teddy Ursa appeared in Going for a Spinder. It was disguised as a Spinder by Team Rocket and tied up in order to lure a Spinder to them. But instead, its Ursa Ring parent came and uh, got rid of them. 
multiple Teddy Ursa appeared in Leading Astray, where they were among the Pokemon assisting Alapsio in its efforts to help a Whalmer trapped in the sewers. A Teddy Ursa appeared under the care of Normagine in the Broxter is in, where it was among the Pokemon that were poisoned by a group of wild tentacle, but was saved thanks to Brock's Chansey and the ability of uh, the uh, Pokemon move Soft Boiled. A Teddy Ursa appeared in the clumsy Cryer Quiets to Chaos under the ownership of the Pokemon Breeder. It was playing with a Bidoof and a Lionoon when they were all attacked by a rampaging Salamence. Teddy Ursa was then taken to a Pokemon Center and healed with the help of Nurse Joy and her Wigglytuff. A Teddy Ursa appeared in The Power of Us as one of the main Pokemon befriended by Margo. It and a Ditto were targeted by Pokemon Hunters looking for Zerora. Uh, but they were saved by Zerora, Ash and his friends. A Teddy Ursa made a cameo appearance in Celebi, the voice of the forest, as a re resident of Celebi's forest. A baby Teddy Ursa appeared in Extreme Pokemon, where it was one of the Pokemon being cared for by Mr. Shelby. A Teddy Ursa appeared in The Legend of Thunder. And finally, a Teddy Ursa appeared in Gonna Rule the School, under the ownership of the Pokemon Trainer's School. It was temporarily loaned to one of the school's underage students for use. So question three is, which Pokemon is number 121? And your options are either A, Mr. Mime, B, Staryu, or C, Starmie. I'll give you 10 seconds starting from now. And the answer is Starmie. Um, this is a dual water and psychic type Pokemon introduced in Generation 1. It evolves from Staryu when it's exposed to a water stone. Um, it is a Pokemon that resembles two violet starfish with five appendages each. And the front starfish has a golden formation in the center. In the center of the golden casing is its red dual core which can glow in seven colours, and has developed to resemble a cut precious stone. The second starfish is a semi attached to the back of the first and can spin at 360 degrees. This rotational action is how Starmi swims through the ocean. It can also launch itself out of the water and fly through the air for short periods as seen in the Pokemon Snap, and from the anime when it's used against um, some of Misty's opponents. From its core, Starmie can emit electrical waves that are powerful enough to reach the furthest parts of the universe. The multicolour glowing of its core is also believed to be a method of communication inside the species. As seen in the anime, the core will go dark if Starmie is knocked unconscious and will sometimes flicker if Starmie is on low health. Because of its body shape and habit of sending transmissions skyward, some people believe this Pokemon to be extraterrestrial. Being the result of an evolution via evolutionary stone, Sami is rarely seen in the wild, but it can be found in the deepest parts of the ocean. Um, it is considered to be Luminian's favourite food. And despite being a genderless Pokemon, Staryu and Starmi were programmed to learn egg moves in gold and silver. However, due to being genderless, they were unobtainable. Um, this was uh, fixed in Pokemon Crystal. Also, they are one of the few genderless Pokemon able to learn Attract in Generation 2, along with Mew. In the Japanese exclusive Pokemon Stadium, Starmie seems to have originally been a lot more robbery than it is now, as its limbs stretch when it's hit. Starmie appears to be a stylized starfish, given its tears to outer space. It may also be a pun on a literal star. Uh, Starmie's gem being cut evokes the idea of some form of jewellery, notably the eight facets prominently witnessed upon uh, Starmie's gemstone um, would be called the star facets uh, were it a real jewel. Starmie also bears some resemblance to the star of Ishtar. Um, Ishtar, also called Inanna, is known as Queen of Heaven. Starmie may be derived from star, referring to its shape and me which may involve me as in gem or jewel, referring to its core. 
In English, me may be a corruption of me, the personal pronoun, in con contrast to the you uh, in the star you. This pun is not present in the Japanese names, since star you is Japanese name is different from its English name. Starmi uh, debuted in the Water Flowers of Cerulean City. Misty used it in a battle fairly often, uh, but preferred to use her star you more. In the Misty Mermaid, she left it at the Cerulean Gym for her sisters. Starmi appeared in Bye Bye Psyduck under the ownership of Marina. It was used to battle Misty, facing off against a Golduck that was under her command at the time. It was defeated when the force of Golduck's hyperbeam uh, shattered its light screen. Starmi appeared in Misty Meets Her Match under the ownership of Rudy, the gym leader of Trevita Island. It was used in his battle against Ash, where it battled Squirtle, and was defeated by its newly learned Hydro Pump. Starmi reappeared in a flashback in Hello Pomelo. A wild Starmi appeared in Going for, gold, for the Gold, where it attacked Team Rocket's submarine with Thunderbolt. A Starmi appeared in Battle Aboard St. Anne, where it was defeated by Ash's Raticate. A Starmi appeared in the Battling Eevee Brothers during the Evolutionary Party in Stone Town. Uh, a Starmi appeared in Pikachu's Vacation as one of the Pokemon, scene, Pokemon theme park. And Asami appeared in Celebi, the voice of the forest. So question four is, which Pokemon is number 187? Your options are A. Hopip, B. Zatu, or C. Velosum. Again, I'll be giving you ten seconds. And time's up. And the answer is Hoppip. This is a dual type grass and flying Pokemon introduced in Generation 2. It evolves into Skiplum starting at level 18 and then evolves into Jumplot uh, starting at level 27. Hoppip is a round pink Pokemon with long green leaves growing on top of its head. The leaves on its head have rag ragged edges similar to a dandelion. It has big triangular ears with dark insides and beady yellow eyes that lack pupils. Its arms and legs are stubby and it has a short tail with a rounded tip. There is a circular yellow pad on the underside of each foot. Hoppit's body is very light and is very easily lifted off the ground by winds and will drift in the air. Hoppip can sense approaching strong winds. In order to avoid being Blown away, it clusters and links leaves with other hoppip, or grips the ground firmly with its feet. However, it enjoys gentle breezes. Hoppip lives in temperate grasslands, although some also drift through fields, mountains, and even urban environments. Hoppip and its evolutions were given their English names by Nob uh, Ag Agasawara. Hoppip appears to be based on a bulb or root. The leaves on its head resembles leaves of a dandelion. Its body also uh, slightly resembles a cat. Hoppip may derive from hop, hip hop, or hoppity hop, indicating that it jumps or flies through the air. Uh, pip, a type of seed, or pip squeak. The names of all stages of its evolutionary line are based on the phrase just a hop, skimp, skip, and a jump away. Seven Hoppip debuted in Foul Weather Friends under the ownership of Maria. She used them to predict the weather. They were later targeted by Team Rocket. A Hoppip appeared in Who's Flying Now? James bought it from the Magic Harp salesman, believing it to be a Chimeco, uh, but was uh, discovered to have just been painted that way. A Hoppip appeared in Tricks of the Trade as one of the Pokemon seen at the Pokemon Swap. In Pompona. A Hoppip appeared in Beauty and the Breeder under the ownership of a Pokemon breeder participating in a Pokemon breeding competition. Multiple Hoppip appeared in Pikachu and Pichu as residents of Big Town. Uh, three Hoppip appeared in the Grass Route, two of them belonged to Ephraim's parents, and the third belonged to a competitor in the Grass Tournament. Nine Hoppip appeared in the Big Balloon Blow Up, all under the ownership of a trainer. They were among the Pokemon competing in the Pokemon Balloon Race. 
Multiple Hoppip appeared in Bulbasaur the Ambassador, where they were among the feuding Pokemon at Professor Oak's laboratory. Four Hoppip appeared in The Legend of Thunder. A Hoppip appeared in a Tyrogue full of trouble, where it received an apple from a Tyrogue. Multiple Hoppip appeared in Fangs for Nothing, as inhabitants of the Dragon Holy Land. And multiple Hoppip appeared in Journey to the Starting Line, as some of the Pokemon that seen at Professor Oak's laboratory. So, question 5 is, which Pokemon is number 295? And your options are either A, Shedinja, B, Exploud, or C, Cacturn. I'll give you 10 seconds, starting from now. And the answer is Exploud. Um, this is a normal type Pokemon introduced in Generation 3 or the Hoenn region. It evolves um, from Loudrin starting at level 40, and it's the final form of uh, Wisma. Um, it is a blue bipedal Pokemon with a large mouth. It has red eyes, a stubby nose, and two peg like teeth in each jaw. It has uh, protruding tubes with holes along its body. Seven forming a crest on top of its head, one of each elbow and knee, uh, two along its back, and one at the end of each of its uh, two tails. The tube along its head crest and tails are tipped with yellow, while the ones along its back have yellow semicircular patterns on either sides. There are two yellow semicircle markings on its belly, but they are rarely seen due to its giant mouth. Um, its arms have three thin stripes below its elbow and three fingers. Each foot has four claws, three in the front and one in the back, and a yellow paw pad. Explouds use uh, the tubes on its body to draw in air and increase its noise-based attacks. Its bellowing is capable of triggering earthquakes and can be heard from over six miles away. While it only raises its voice when it is in battle, can also communicate its feelings to others by producing whistle-like sounds. It is typically found within caves. Explode can learn the most sound-based moves, being able to use uh, 11. Explode may be based on a pipe organ, a musical instrument known for its loud volume. The shape of its head uh, shares similarities with the frills of ceratospid uh, skulls, most notably uh, Styracosaurus. Exploud is a combination of Explow, Explode and Loud. Exploud debuted in Exploud and Clear, evolving from Guy's Loudred. After it evolved, it disobeyed and then left its trainer. Later in the episode, Team Rocket tried to kidnap Exploud. When Exploud saw Guy defending it, it began to listen to him once again. Exploud appeared in Light's Camera Up to Action, where it uh, played the role of a villain in a movie that Elijah and his camera up were delivering to a small village. Exploud appeared in Pikachu's Island Adventure, where it, along with a Hariyama and a Chatot, assisted Meowth and his cronies in claiming an island and kicking out its current residents. As a result, Pikachu and his friends agreed to help the original resident Pokemon reclaim the island. To Exploud appeared in Arceus and the Jaw of Life, under the ownership of Damos in the original timeline set up by the movie. They were used by Damos, who was under hypnosis, uh, to attack Arceus with a shockwave. When Ash and his friends travelled to the past to prevent this, Marcus, the one responsible for hypnotising, Damos um, managed to use the Exploud again to attack Arceus. An Exploud appeared in Team Rocket's shocking recruit, where it was causing trouble for Team Rocket. An Exploud appeared in Splitting Airs under the ownership of Blake and Heath's father. It attacked Ash, his friends, Blake and Heath, and was mistaken as a wild Pokemon at first. Then it was revealed to be Blake and Heath's father's Pokemon, who often, once often helped them remember how well they got along. Exploud appeared in the Hooper Surprise Ring Adventures Short Wake Up, where it was among the Pokemon summoned by Hooper to use their sound-based attacks to wake Ash, uh, but that was unsuccessful. An Exploud appeared in a fantasy in Pinch Healing, 
the coordinators explored appeared in Team Shocker, but were seen participating in the performance stage of the Senecian Contest. Explored appeared in a conspiracy to conquer, where it was among the Pokemon mind controlled by the evil psychopathic Malamar, and an Explored appeared as an image in a performance pop quiz. Which which Pokemon is number five hundred and forty seven? And your options are either A throw, B Whimsicott, or C Darumaka. I'll give you ten seconds starting now. And the answer is Whimsicott. This is a dual type grass and fairy Pokemon uh, introduced in uh, Generation 5, uh, which was um, the Ultra region. Um, in uh, previous to Generation 6, it was a pure grass type, um, but it um, obviously with the Clamish region, they introduced the fairy types. It evolves from Cottony when it is exposed to a sunstone. Uh, Whimsicott is a small brown bipedal Pokemon. A mane of cotton like fluff covers its back, neck, and forehead. Behind it is a green star shaped section similar to where a stem or vine meets a fruit or flower on a plant. Whimsicott's face features orange oval shaped eyes and its face is flanked by a pair of green coloured lobes shaped like curled horns or ears. Whimsicott can manipulate its body to pass through cracks no matter how narrow. It takes advantage of this ability as a notorious prankster, moving things and leaving cotton balls behind. Despite weighing 14.6 um, pounds or 6.6 .6 kilograms, Whimsicott appears capable of riding upon the wind, but whether this means they actually generate whirlwinds themselves or get carried by wind currently remains unclear. Whimsicott represents April in the universe. A horoscope. Whimsicott's appearance alludes to a fully bloomed ball of cotton, but its behaviour as a windswept wandering plant seems to be based on tumbleweeds. It also may draw some origin from the vegetable lamb of Tartary, a mythical sheep growing plant used to explain the production of cotton in the Middle Ages. Uh, this association with sheep is reinforced by Whimsicott's inclusion in the universe horoscope. Furthermore, Whimsicott uh, displays a mysterious side akin to uh, impish creatures from folklore like the Brazilian Sachi, both the brown creatures that live in forests, ride on winds and play pranks. Whimsicott may be a combination of whimsical, or whimsy and cotton. The Whimsicott appeared in Unrest at the Nursery, or is among the Pokemon that Lena was taking care of. It was later inadvertently hit by Valabee's uh, punishment. Whimsicott debuted in White, uh, Victini, and Zekrom, and Black, Victini, and Rifferm. Whimsicott made its main series debut in Clash of the Connoisseurs, as one of the Pokemon that Burgundy, disguised as uh, Burgundy, reviewed as a possible Pokemon for Marigold. Multiple Whimsicott appeared in Kyrim vs. the Sword of Justice. Whimsicott appeared in Fantasy in New Places, a Familiar Faces. Multiple Whimsicott appeared in Genesect and the Legend Awakened as the residents of Pokemon Hills. Another also appeared in Mewtwo's Flashback. Whimsicott appeared in a flashback in Survival of the Striaton Gym. Three trainers uh, Whimsicott appeared in Alola to New Adventure. A trainer's Whimsicott appeared in a shocking grocery run. Whimsicott appeared in Lily's Exhilarating Challenge, where it was among the Pokemon playing in Lily's garden. It appeared again in the old Raise and Switch. A trainer's Whimsicott appeared in Balloons, Brion and Belligerence. Three Whimsicott appeared in Deceiving Appearances, where they were among the Pokemon seen at Ether's Paradise. They reappeared alongside two others in Don't Ignore the Small Stuffle. Eight Whimsicott appeared in Securing the Future, um, the, with five under the ownership of different trainers and the rest being wild. They joined the rest of Alola in showering Necrozma with light so it could return to its true form, and a trainer's Whimsicott appeared in Battling Be Besties. Which Pokemon is number 747? And your options are either A. Marini, B. Um, Rabombi 
or C. Mudsdale. Do 10 seconds. And the answer is... And the answer is a Marini. This is a joint water and poison type Pokemon found in Pokemon Sun and Moon, which is Generation 7. Question 8 is which Pokemon is number 848? And your options are either A. Thievil, B. Roly Coley, or C. Toxel. 10 seconds. And the answer is Toxel. Um, this is a Pokemon uh, which was introduced in the uh, current generation, which is the um, Galar region in Generation 8, um, or Pokemon Sword and Shield. If you're looking at it from a game's point of view, it has three abilities that it can learn. Uh, Rattled, which is speed, is raised by one stage when the Pokemon is hit by a bug type, ghost type, or dark type move, or is intimidated. Uh, static, um, the opponent has a 30% chance of being induced with Paralyze when using a physical attack. Or its hidden ability is Klutz. The Pokemon cannot receive any effect of hold items except those that affect experience such as Experience Share or Macho Brace. It evolves into Toxtricity at level 30. Um, it is the first dual um, electric Poison type Pokemon to ever be uh, introduced within a game. Question 9 is which Pokemon is number 630? And your options are either A. Mandibuzz, B. Chandelure, or C. Golark. Uh, 10 seconds. And the answer is Mandibuzz. This is a dark flying type Pokemon which was introduced in the Unova region or Generation 5. Or if you're more familiar with the games, it's Pokemon Black and White. And obviously they had the spin-offs of Black 2 and White 2. Um, this Pokemon evolves from Vullaby at level 54, which makes it one of the highest um, levels in order to um, of a Pokemon and is incredibly high considering it's only a um, one uh, additional evolution stage. It has three effects um, abilities that it can get. Big Pex, which protects the Pokemon from defense lowering effects. Overcoat protects Pokemon from weather effects and powder moves such as sleep powder and poison powder. And its third ability, the hidden ability, is weak armor. Hit by an attack, the Pokemon's defense is lowered by one stage, but its speed is increased by two stages. And the final question is um, question 10 which Pokemon is number 424? Your options are either A. Gastrodon, B. Ambipom, or C. Bronzor. I'll give you 10 seconds from now. And the answer is Ambipom. Um, this is a normal type Pokemon which was introduced in Generation 4. So this is the Sinnoh region, or uh, for those in the games, it's your uh, Diamond and Pearl. Um, it evolves from Apom when a leveled up, uh, whilst knowing the move uh, Double Hit. It is a purple Simeon Pokemon with two tails each with a large rounded hand with three red tipped fingers. The tails also have a cuff of a rounded frill on the wrists. Um, the bases of Ambipom's tails also have a similar frill. It has round ears with red insides. Ambipom has an arrangement of a split hair sticking out from the top of its head. These strands of hair are longer on a female. It has a purple triangular nose and wide eyes. 
and the pom can leap from tree to tree with um, staggering speed. To eat, it uh, shucks nuts with its two tails. As it has two hands on its tails, it rarely uses its arms. Ambi palm works in large colonies in heavily wooded areas and makes yin by linking tails with another ambi palm, apparently in friendship. It also shows affection by using both its tails to wrap and squeeze people. It lives along with its young apom. It lives high in the treetops of tropical, temperate, and even boreal forests, using its tails for balance as it swings from branch to branch. In the Alola region, while searching for comfortable trees, Ambipom tend to get into territorial disputes with um, fighting type Pokemon Persimium, in which they win half the time. Despite it learning a dual chop uh, via level up, starting in Generation 7, it can't learn it via Move Tutor in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Uh, Ambipom appears to be based on a New World Monkey, and the exaggerated concept of their prehensile tail. Ambipom also shares its large smile with a symbol banging monkey toy. It may vaguely reference the a Axolotl, a creature of Aztec mythology with a monkey hands and a fifth human hand on its tail. Ambipom is a combination of the pre-ambi from the Latin for both, uh, referring to ambidexterity and the corruption of, corruption of palm. Uh, Ambipom debuted in Journey to the Unknown, where Dawn's Apom, formerly owned by Ash, evolved. Upon evolving, she matured greatly and became one of Dawn's most talented Pokemon. Being used in many of her contests, she was later given to O, in the uh, to thine own Pokemon be true, in order to train and then become a full pom champion at his training center in Vermilion City. Three trainers and Pom appeared in uh, Volcanian and the Mechanical Marvel as residents of the Azoth Kingdom, and Dawn's um, Ambi Pom first appeared in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl episode 28. So how did you guys do with the quiz? Uh, was there anything interesting you found uh, from the uh, facts I shared? Or did you know most of these? Um, how did you do as out of uh, 10? Leave your comments down below, uh, like the video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to, subs to subscribe.